In this first part, I'm going to show how to integrate with Salesforce Authentication. And we'll start with uh, an empty mobile application. And the first thing that we'll do is to add references to the Salesforce connector. And we'll use this connector throughout uh, our development to fetch data from from Salesforce, right? So just add references to everything, and now you are ready to customize the login. Now Salesforce has uh, two options for integration. Uh, either you supply a security token in the uh, login process, or you configure your Salesforce instance to have a white list of IP ranges for authentication. Default, the default installation comes with the requirement for a security token, so I'm gonna just customize the login process for by requesting this to, to the user. But depending on depending on your configuration you might not need to do this. Right. Okay. Now let's look at the login uh, action that's executed when we click the login button. As you can see, we are invoking a server side action and here we start uh, integrating with Salesforce. The first thing that we'll do is to authenticate with Salesforce by using the username and password. So you already have the username and password. And we'll need to add the security token. We'll also, also need to specify the client ID and the client secret. This information is obtained when you register your application in Salesforce. And since it, it's, this is a, a constant, uh, constant information for your entire application, I'm just going to use site properties. And let me just refill it with my environment, the configuration for my environment, and use it here. All right, so after logging in in Salesforce, we should be able to obtain the user details, which can include username, uh, email, and the Salesforce ID. And we should also create a local user in our application representing that Salesforce user so that we can assign roles and have a, a session um, maintain the user session in our side and we'll first um, query if we already have the user in our database so let's just query by username and let's create it or update uh, that user depending on whether we found it already in our database or not Let's refill all the data that, that we know from the Salesforce API. So we are filling the name, username, and also the email. And you can also start in the external ID. You could also start start the user ID from Salesforce. Finally. Create our update. Right. And now, uh, since we are creating or updating the user, we should be able to log in with just the user ID. We don't need the username and password. So we'll use another action for logging for the login process. It just requires the ID of the user. 
and note that we are not storing the password in our local user, which means that we uh, we couldn't be able we wouldn't be able to log in with using the username and password anyway. All right, so let's try it. Okay. All right, so here, here's our login screen. Let me just enter my credentials for this particular environment. And we hit the login button. And yes, login worked. 